Oh my gosh! Yes! There it is! What is up everyone, Munching Orange here, and welcome back to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Last episode, we left off here with our buddy, the Elephant, whose name I definitely still don't know. But today, we're going to be heading off to the next route after we defeated the second gym, the Water-type gym here in Holbury, Ness's gym in the last episode. Today, we're going to be heading off to the right into Galar Mine number two. Whoa, already we got Scraggy running on up. Okay, I didn't know he would be that aggressive. Usually the little Pokemon just uh, walk up to you but don't actually battle you. But, I mean, Scraggy is known to be a bit of a ruthless Pokemon. Maybe that's not the best word, but it likes to fight, you know? It likes to scrap, some would say. Uh, and we got it at the perfect HP to actually catch it here. So, even though I don't plan on using uh, Scraggy on my team, it is a Pokemon I've always had love for ever since it was introduced. Uh, dark and fighting type, of course, and just has a really cool design. So let's toss our Pokeball and catch ourselves a Scraggy to kick off Galar Mine number two. Really weird name on that one, uh, that it just has number two at the end there. But of course, we went through the first Galar Mine before even taking on the first gym. And Scraggy, the shedding Pokemon, will be added to the decks. If it locks eyes with you, watch out. Nothing and no one is safe from the reckless headbutts of this troublesome Pokemon. Basically what I said earlier, Scraggy is ruthless and you better watch your back when these little hoodlums are around. Thought I saw a sparkle there, but... Oh my gosh, a Binacle popped up too? No, Scraggy! Get out of here! It's like this cave is just full of all my favorite Pokemon. I don't know why I like Binacle so much, but... I did use one in my Pokemon X and Y playthrough and always thought it was a really, uh, I wouldn't exactly say cool, but unique looking Pokemon. <laughs> it's kind of like a joke, honestly. I don't know how this thing got through the concept design for Pokemon back at Game Freak. What the heck? Ancient Power actually shows the different fossils in its animation now. I don't know if it was like that in, you know, the 3DS games, but I didn't notice it, that's for sure. Uh, so one more nuzzle, and this thing should be primed and ready to capture here. I really don't know why I'm catching all these Pokemon. I guess just because I like them, design-wise, and they've been Pokemon that I've used in playthroughs in the past, so might as well go for it, as we catch ourselves Binacle this time. But there are some new Pokemon to catch here in Galar Mine number two as well, specifically one Pokemon that I really, really love, so... Hopefully we can find it as we've got the two-handed Pokemon. After two Binacle find a suitably sized rock, they adhere themselves to it and live together. They cooperate to gather food during high tide. Truly, the codependency Pokemon. That's what its uh, description should have actually been. But uh, we got a bit of a dark spot to fish in over here. And I wonder what kind of water Pokemon are actually lurking in the Galar mine. Maybe something we haven't seen yet? Oh, actually it is in Barboach here. But I'm not really sure I want to catch this one. Just gonna run away there and keep on going through the mine, but not for long because Beat is here. You again. Yep, that's me. This grandma looking teenager. I'd feel sorry for my Pokemon if I made them take part in a battle against low level opponents. I'm not in the mood to deal with weaklings right now. Then again, I suppose it's a form of mercy to crush weak opponents early on. If you're under the misguided impression that you're stronger than me, then surely you would be up for a Pokemon battle. Uh, hold on. Nah, okay. We don't need to hold on. It's utterly inconceivable that I, the challenger chosen by the chairman, will lose. Well, you kind of got smacked last time, bro. So, I don't know. Unless you've really upgraded your team, I don't think things are going to go that much better for you here, Bead. But he's going to start off with Solosis, which is the same Pokemon he had last time. And of course, I haven't mentioned it yet, but Flash finally evolved in the previous episode. After taking down Nessa's gym, our little Corgi became Boltund, which is this amazing looking bolt of lightning dog. Huh, looks like you've grown a bit. Only a little bit though. Yeah, looks like our Flash has grown a bit too. So I was just talking about him. 
I love, love, love this evolution's design. I never expected that Yamper would become this, you know? I thought it would just be a stronger looking Corgi, but it's a completely different breed of dog now and an even stronger dog. Uh, as many of you pointed out, its speed stat goes through the roof once it evolves. Those little Corgi legs really evolved. I mean, look at those hind legs, bro. That's some power right there. Uh, but that's enough of our little Bolton. I've uh, talked it up enough, I guess. So let's go for Sizzly Bug Peed. You know what I'm trying to say. Salsa! Let's go! Um, and Salsa is, of course, a bug type, which are also super effective against psychic type Pokemon. And that's what Bead seems to specialize in. So let's go for our Bug Bite and destroy poor little Poppy Bros Jr. I think that's what it was called. The Kirby enemy that I compared it to. Uh, but, whoa! Bead has actually got one more Pokemon. But is it what I think it is? Excellent! Not everyone can corner my team like this. But we somehow seem to figure it out again and again. And yes, it is the Galarian Ponita. My little Ponita, as some would say. But it is, of course, a Psychic type, which means that Salsa should be able to handle it here. And yes, I'm gonna say Salsa now because I read one comment that triggered me, so I hope you're happy with my pronunciation now, mister. I know Bead's not happy as we destroy My Little Ponyta with one Bug Bite and Salsa squeezes out the victory. You showed at least a little effort, so I decided I should let you win. Salty AF. This dude just can't handle a loss, can he? Ah, pardon me. It seems I must take back my words. You're not weak, just lack talent. Your chances of completing the gym challenge are pretty slim, I must say. Here, I'll give you this. Something to show you at least tried. Really, dude. We get the Pity League card from him. Now, where shall I go next to collect wishing stars? You keep doing that. Maybe if you wish hard enough, you might be able to beat us one day, but... Was that literally a wishing- Oh my gosh, no! Wimpod! How do we get that? What the heck? It popped up and instantly ran away. Uh, there's also a Shuckle here and a Shellos. Okay, well, I don't know. Shuckle is usually a rare Pokemon in other games. I'm not sure about in this one, but might as well try and catch ourselves one here. Or not. You know, I changed my mind after seeing its face. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess uh, Shuckle is just not for me. My Pokemon is bursting with energy. What I mean to say is, please battle me. All right, hiker. No need to get so hesitant, my guy. There's plenty of time for all of you hikers that I'm sure will be battling in here. And this guy's Pokemon is going to be Carcoal. The evolution of Roly Coley and look at that face. Okay, well, thanks for changing the angle, dude, as I was literally mentioning you. But there we go. We get a better look at uh, <laughs> what looks like Galarian Golem. I mean, I don't know if that's just me, but it literally looks like Golem's face put onto a minecart full of coal, which is really weird. I wonder if that's actually what happened. Like, maybe Roly Coley is just the rock, and it went into a minecart and somehow took over it, growing legs out of the bottom, or if that's actually part of its body, like its organic body, if that makes sense. Either way, uh, one last nuzzle will finish it off there bit disrespectful since Nuzzle doesn't do the most damage, obviously, but he barely had any HP left, so it goes down. A loss is a loss. My Pokemon lost its energy, too. Doesn't that suck? Might have to go to a Pokemon Center, bruh. Get that fixed up. But over here, we got three Dusk Balls, which are good at catching Pokemon at night or in dark places such as caves, like the one that we're in right now, so might put that to use. Oh my gosh! Yes! There it is! The wild Stunfisk has appeared! I thought I saw a little Pokeball poking out of the ground, and it turns out it was, but not really. It's Galarian Stunfisk, and you guys know I love me some Stunfisk, and it actually has a Galarian form in this game. I don't know why, I just went for Nuzzle, knowing that uh, Stunfisk is normally a ground Pokemon, and I guess it still is, but I'm not sure what its secondary typing is, so we'll have to catch it and find out. But yes, my favorite floppy pancake fish Pokemon has actually got a brand new form in Galar. And I really don't know why I kept Flash in, knowing that this thing is ground. I guess maybe Charlie might have better luck. Uh, our water gun doesn't do the most damage, so even though it is a ground type, I don't think it will kill it. 
yeah, that barely does anything, actually. So we can definitely go for one more. And you know I'm about to catch this Stunfisk. Even though I don't know if I'm going to use it on the team, per se. Um, I mean, you never know in the Gala region. It might have a Gigantamax form or something, but... Because Stunfisk doesn't usually evolve... Or wait, maybe it does. Like, I really don't know, because... Galarian Farfetch, of course, evolves into uh, Surfetched. And Ponyta, well, we know it's going to evolve. It would be kind of a shame if it didn't, but... With Stunfisk, I really don't know. Alright, the first Pokeball is not going to work out. Maybe we should go for one of those Dust Balls that we just got, actually. Since it is better at catching Pokemon in caves. So, uh, let's have a look around. Jeez, we have a lot of Pokeballs. And the Dust Ball, of course, was the very last one. So, we could have just pressed left instead of gone all the way through right. But, really? Okay, Stunfisk. Guess he's a little feistier than I thought. Well, I don't think we can go for any other attacks. I feel like it might faint it, so let's just keep tossing more Dusk Balls. That is just not working out for us right now, though, as it goes for the Revenge. And I love its design, though. It's literally like a bear trap. Like, the little Pokeball was poking out of the ground, and you go to try to grab it, but then it snaps at you, and it's bear trap. That would hurt, man. I would not want to get caught in a Galarian Stunfisk, but... Jeez, this thing is actually so feisty right now. And somehow the toughest Pokemon we've faced so far in this entire playthrough is Galarian Stunfisk. I mean, if it was going to be any Pokemon, I wouldn't have it any other way, basically. And jeez, why is this thing so hard to catch? What the heck, dude? I should have saved some of my Dust Balls from earlier. That kind of sucks. Maybe I'll just go for a Headbutt here and hope that Wooloo doesn't do enough to knock it out. Oh, wait, it's actually not very effective. Huh. Could we actually go for one more then? Hopefully no critical hits here. Alright, that's fine. We got it very, very low HP. This revenge is about to destroy Wulu though. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Little fluffy one. Holy moly, this Stunfisk is destroying our whole team right now though. What the heck, dude? I guess confirmed it is a Steel type though. Which makes sense because it is a Steel Trap after all, so... Now, let's go for one more Great Ball, and hopefully with the red HP, it will finally get caught. Come on, Stunfisk. Stay in there. What the? Really? I thought that was it for sure. Like, I can't be the only one that thought that was about to be it, right? Come on, dude. There's no way. We're going to run out of Great Balls on this thing, too. The Galarian Stunfisk is OP. It's going to kill Charlie, too. Oh my gosh, guys, the hardest Pokemon to catch in Sword and Shield turns out to be Galarian Stunfisk. I feel like that should be the title of this video now, you know, a little bit of a uh, clickbait action. But finally, Galarian Stunfisk will stay in the ball after wasting three Dusk Balls, about, I think, four, three or four Great Balls and even some Pokeballs. We finally get it. I'm so happy right now. The Trap Pokemon, living in mud with a high iron content, has given it a strong steel body and a colorful green pattern on it as well. Making me second guess if I should actually add it onto the team since it was so freaking hard to catch, but I think for now, I'm okay. So we're going to send it right into the PC. You know, you deserve to be in exile for a little bit, Stunfisk, for putting us through all that struggle right there. But uh, because of that, actually, oh my gosh, wait, Noibat! Why did I whistle? I should have just ran straight at it. Well, whatever. We gotta go heal up is what I'm trying to say. And we're back in the mine. Oh my gosh, Wimpod! Yes! Somehow it didn't run away from us this time. So we get a chance to catch it and reveal that I've actually added Galarian Farfetch'd onto the team. Look at how tiny that little Wimpod is. I was about to say, Farfetch is looking big right now, but I'm pretty sure it's just because Wimpod is tiny. I mean, maybe Farfetch is big too, actually. It looked... Pretty large next to our trainer there, but uh, we don't have the best moves right now. Maybe I should actually swap to Flash. But you might notice I finally gave the Magnet item as well that we picked up last time uh, by the Marketplace. Somehow I forgot to put it on it during the entirety of Nessa's Gym Challenge. Definitely would have helped uh, because the Magnet powers up electric moves. Um, but because of that, I hope that this Nuzzle doesn't knock out Wimpod somehow. Of course it does. Oh my gosh. Alright, well, I really wanted to catch one. I actually really like uh, Golisopod 
Wimpod's evolution, and I don't think I've ever used one in a playthrough, so would have been nice, but you know, you can't have nice things as they say, and there's another Galarian Stunfisk hiding there, but I'm not having it, man. Not this time around. Oh my gosh, there's another one too. There's so many of them. What the heck, dude? I thought they would actually be rare, but I guess they're pretty common here in the Galar mine, trying to trap unwary trainers that think it might be an item buried in the ground. Actually, I wonder if any of them are actually items in the ground, or if they're all Galarian Sunfisk. Man, I guess I'm gonna have to check him out now. Maybe it would be some good training for Artorius, the Galarian Farfetch'd here. Uh, since he does have Rock Smash, and now we know that Stunfisk is a Steel type, uh, could be some good training to help him catch up to the rest of the team. Since right now Artorius is only at level 20, but then again, uh, this little Rock and Roller here might be some good training too. Using the Rock Smash on it might be the most appropriate time, or the most, you know, fitting that Rock Smash has ever looked, since Rock and Roller is literally just a tiny little rock. But uh, we got Timber coming out next. Not quite so easy to deal with with Farfetch'd uh, because the other moves that we've got I think are Brutal Swing and Fury Cutter, which both of those are not very effective against Timber. So let's make things easier for us. Go for the Robin and one shot that with a Swift Pluckin. And I think that might be it for this minor lady here. Or at least I hope. The muscles I work or use for work and for battle are different. What? kind of muscles do you use in Pokemon battles? I'm confused. Maybe your brain muscles? Anyway, we found a Grip Claw, which will extend the duration of uh, binding moves, as it just said there. And oh my gosh, look at that Gastrodon in the back there. I actually found out that we don't yet have the upgrade for the Rotom Bike that lets us go on water. So I thought that was naturally part of the Rotom Bike, but as you can see, uh, we can't really do that right now. So, uh, I guess we can't do anything about the Grastrodon over there, which means we will just keep on going through the mine, narrowly avoiding the Stunfisks, and our favorite bar brawlers are back. Excuse me, mate. Sorry to bother you. You're one of them taking part in the gym challenge, right? Crikey, but that's really something. I'd love a battle against a trainer like you. Well, look at you, Orange. Yo, Hop. Surrounded by adoring fans, eh? Yeah, but not my fans. <laughs> You'll even be showing up Lee pretty soon. Oi, jog on, mate. Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation here? Hop doesn't care, dude. Yeah, and can't you see that I'm Hop, the trainer who'll be your next champion? Ooh, so we've got a joker here, huh? You're so funny, I forgot to laugh. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'll prove it then. And I think a battle with you lot would definitely end with some laughs. Dang, Hop is getting serious. Let's take him on together, Orange. You ready, mate? Yes, we are. The two of us were endorsed by the champion himself. We'll show you just what that means. Well, if you insist, Team Yellow's gonna teach your kids that the gym challenge is no joke. You better not be yellow. What did this other kid have to come waltzing up for, eh? I just wanted to knock off challenges one at a time. Well, unfortunately for you clowns, looks like we're knocking you out. Two for one deal today, as we've got the double entendre of Team Yellow Grunts. And looks like this time their Zigzagoon has finally evolved too. Ooh, good thing we actually have Artorius leading off because uh, Team Yell loves using Dark type Pokemon, and of course, Fighting type is super effective on Dark types. So hopefully, Artorius can get some nice experience here, as uh, poor little Hops Wooloo is gonna take a beating right now. How is your Wooloo at level 20 right now, Hop? Like, I've barely been using my own Wooloo, and it's a higher level than yours already. Do you not have an EXP share? I mean, I guess I haven't really used Wooloo in any battles. Meanwhile, Hop actually is trying to use it, so that could be why. Uh, as you can see, Wooloo took quite a beating there, so maybe if he wasn't using it as much or leading off his battles with it, probably would survive more often as it's going to get taken down by the Night Slash from Linoon there. That sucks. Well, at least we got to take out one of these uh, Team Yell Pokemon here. And I went for Linoon. I'm not sure why. I feel like it looks like more of a threat than Thievil there. <laughs> Swiper no swiping. The only thing you're swiping is a death sentence today. 
Man, that sounds brutal. I don't know why I just said that. But Team Yell has upgraded their arsenal with a little Pancham. And it looks like Hop is going to go for his Corvus Squire up next. So Pancham is actually a normal and uh, dark type, which means that our Rock Smash will be four times super effective on it and probably take it out in one hit. Or at least I hope so. Never mind. What am I saying? Pancham is a fighting and dark type. I don't know what I confused it with. Maybe Beware? And it's going to destroy us. No, Artorius. I should have just gone for Thievul. Oh, man. Wow, I can't believe I messed that up so bad. I really thought Pancham was normal and dark type. Or, wait, Beware is normal fighting, not even normal dark. I'm just getting all sorts of things confused right now, dude. Alright, scratch that, guys. Maybe I'm not as knowledgeable on Pokemon as I thought. Or, I mean, I just... Everyone forgets things, okay? You'll have to forgive me for this one. But, thankfully, Robin comes out. The double Corvus Squire squad will double destroy uh, Team Yell's two Pokemon there. But this man's actually still got one more, and it is going to be Lyopard. I'm glad they've actually got evolutions at least, because I was expecting them to still have weakling Pokemon, but they're actually upgrading pretty quickly here, or evolving, I guess, uh, since we're not even at the third gym yet, and already they've got some fully evolved Pokemon. I love how they're head rocking right now, though. It actually kind of fits in with their music, too. It's getting me pumped up right now. I'm bobbing my head, too. But there we go. At least Wulu gets some experience. Unfortunately, Artorius didn't. But are you going to yell at us because we up and yell lost? You lost? Was that like a pun? If I'd use a horn, would I have had a better chance of winning? What do you mean? You did use your horn. And whoa! Our own little Wulu is finally going to be evolving. After I just smack talk hops for not being the highest level, our own floofy friend will evolve into Dub Wool. How fitting since we just got the dub there against Team Yell. This thing looks awesome though. The sheep Pokemon weave a carpet from its springy wool and you end up with something closer to a trampoline. You'll start to bounce the moment you set foot on it. What the heck? So it's more about bouncing around than rolling? That little mug, the champion's little brother. Guess that's what you get when your older brother's not useless. I know we're Team Yell, but we'll leave quietly once we're beaten. Alright, skedaddle. Nice one, Orange. That's my rival for you. Now then, where could Kabu have gone off to? Let's keep going. Maybe he's farther in. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot that we're here to find Kabu, the fire-type gym leader of Motostoke. Uh, because somehow Hop knows that he's not at his gym right now, so... Wait a minute, we already got healed up, what the heck? Okay, I guess we don't have to waste a revive. Uh, Hop was generous enough to heal us there, and oh my gosh! There's a Dreadnought in the wild, what the heck? But you know, I care more about this little Noibat here. Especially after, back in the wild area, we failed to catch one, like... Actually, we didn't fail to catch it. Technically, we failed to even encounter it as it kept running away from us uh, in the wild area. But here in the cave, it seems like it's a little bit easier to encounter and run into. So we're going to go for the nuzzle with Flash here. Basically our partner in crime when it comes to catching Pokemon. Uh, Flash with the nuzzle seems to be the best Pokemon at that job. As long as it's not a Wimpod or as weak as a Wimpod. Uh, so that's low enough HP there. At least I hope so because... I think one more nuzzle will probably take it out, so... Nice! Didn't give us too much trouble there, and Noibat has been caught. I really don't know why I'm catching all these Pokemon, even though I said I was only going to catch uh, the Galarian new Pokemon introduced in Galar. But there's just so many Pokemon around, and this is the Soundwave Pokemon. I thought that was a Transformer, but after Nightfall, they emerge from the caves they nest in during the day. Using their ultrasonic waves, they go on the hunt for ripened fruit. That's great. Uh, you're going in the box though, dude. As cool as I think Noibat is, I don't really want to use one. I'm just kind of filling up the Pokedex uh, because I do want to have a full Pokedex by the end of the playthrough. <laughs> Dreadnought there kind of distracted me. I could have ran at that Wimpod. Oh, another one actually down here. Yes, we get another shot at this little guy here. And I just remembered too, it's got the ability Emergency Exit, right? So if we drop it down to half HP, 
we won't even have a chance to catch it. So do we have any quick balls? I guess not, but we have net balls, which are better at catching water and bug type Pokemon. And Wimpod is actually both of those. So hopefully this works out right off the bat. And it does. Nice. Wimpod has been caught. Good thing I remembered its ability too, because I was totally about to go for Flash and Nuzzle. And it probably would have knocked it to like barely any HP. And then it would have just ran away anyway. So the Turntail Pokemon is ours. It eats anything and everything, including garbage and rotten things. The ground near its nest is always clean. Oh, it's like... uh those fish that go along the bottom of the ocean, just cleaning everything up. Uh, or the ones in the fish tanks too, that, you know, stick to the sides of the glass of the tank and I guess clean everything too. Anyway, this guy says he's gonna send us flying, so let's see how that goes, Mr. Vincent. Part of the rail staff? What does that mean? What exactly are you railing here, Vincent? We're about to drill your drillber though, that's all I know. Oh wait, actually this thing is not a steel type yet, so that's gonna be a neutral effective rock smash coming out there as he goes for the Hone Claws. Oh geez, I feel like he's about to set up for a sweep or to one-shot our Farfetch'd, but I certainly hope not. As we go for another rock smash, get the defense drop there. And actually he just goes for rapid spin, so not really the strongest move there. Although it did a lot of damage actually for being a uh, rapid spin. Oh no! Going for the dig! That sucks too, because Farfetch'd in this uh, region is not a flying type, but it's alright. We've got Robin on our side, so there we go. Gonna swiftly avoid that, and we can finish it off with a pluck. A little bit less experience for Artorias, I guess, because now it's gonna be split between him and Robin. But whatever, man. As long as Artorias isn't going down, we can use all the experience we can get. And his next Pokemon will be Onyx, so... Another chance here for Artorias to get the full experience this time. As another giant rock snake. Or well, the first one that we battled, I think. Aside from the very first Pokemon we ran into the wild area. I think was an Onix, but it was pretty high level, so couldn't really take it down. Um, but what I was trying to say is another very appropriate Pokemon to use Rock Smash on because it is a giant rock snake. And I guess the rock that Rock Smash spawns is actually larger, the larger the Pokemon is. Oof, avoiding the rock slide there, nice. I don't know how much damage that would have done, actually, because we are fighting type, and I'm pretty sure that means we resist rock moves. So yeah, keep on cursing, dude. Curse up a storm. That's pretty much all you can hope for right now. It does raise his defense though, and we haven't had any defense drops with Rock Smash yet, so yeah, it's definitely going to survive another one. And it goes for another curse too? Really, dude? Does that mean it's going to survive one last time? Come on, Onyx. You can keep cursing all you want. It's not going to help you win. I understand that's what raging in video games makes you feel good about yourself, gives you that little bit of a adrenaline rush, but who the heck is learning Scary Face? I don't know. Oh, I guess it was Robin, but I'm not a big fan of Scary Face, so... What incredible power! Guess I was the one sent flying! Yeah, I guess so, dude. Got a little bit smacked down there. And we can move on to get the TM for Santum. Which... I don't know. I guess I'm not gonna read what it does. I don't remember it being particularly powerful, though. Oh, no! Please, Stunfisk! I don't need this right now! Not after the ordeal you put us through earlier. I like noticed the tiny Pokeball a second too late there. Oh my, I didn't even see that one either, but okay, actually there was something back here, I'm pretty sure. I figured I should have gone this way first, as we've got a hidden item, a bag of soft sand. It will boost the power of ground type moves slightly. But yeah, now we can move on to this way, uh, where Hop is waiting for us. What do you got, dude? Whoa, look at that binacle! Thank you for helping out with my training, Team Yell. But I must say, it's unforgivable for you to get in the way of a Karkal hard at work. We weren't getting in his way, we were trying to cheer it on. Still, he did a number on us in that Pokemon battle, so it's time for Team Yell to Scarper and give a morale boost elsewhere. Scarper? I have not heard that slang either. <laughs> Cheering is one thing, but one shouldn't get in the way of honest work. 
Gur! That's Kabu. Man, he's wicked. No wonder he's the fire type gym leader. What does wicked have to do with fire? Ah, you are the trainers endorsed by Leon, Hop, and Orange, am I right? I'm just training right up until the last moment so that I can guarantee the perfect match when I face you, gym challengers. I specialize in fire type Pokemon, and the water type Pokemon in Galar Mine number two are the perfect opponents to train against. This man's hardcore. Regardless, it's getting late. Just go straight once you get out of this mine, and you'll reach Motostoke. Get a good rest at the hotel, and make sure you're both in your top condition. Come on, Karkul. Time for you to head home, too. I'll make sure you get there safely. Gur! We're going to be on fire tomorrow. Okay. He's got, like, the professional jog there. His form's on point. I remember Lee talking about Kabu. He said that a lot of gym challengers give up because they just can't beat Kabu. Man, now I'm getting all fired up, too. Why? I feel like you're the one that's about to lose, Hop. Don't get too excited. Might just burn yourself out. Send yourself up for disappointment. That Karkle from before. I guess it must have been here on a job. You do know about Poke Jobs by now, right? Uh, Pokey what? Looks like there's no help in it. In that case, settle down and let Professor Hop teach you a thing or two. Let's see if I can remember what Lee had written down. Basically, you can have your Pokemon go about and help companies or other folks who are in need of something. You can take Poke Jobs from the road to me at any Pokemon Center, so give it a look sometime. Now, I'm Cream Crackered. <laughs> what? I'm for the bud who drop in and needs some sleep. Come tomorrow, that fire gym leader Kabu better be ready because I'll be coming for him. Whatever you say, dude. We know Hop is all talk and not much walk. Holy moly, there's so many knock towels out here. And a coughing too, yo. We know Galarian wheezing is a thing, but I guess coughing uh, is actually just regular old Cantonian version. So do we really want to catch it? I'm not too certain actually. Oh, it does have neutralizing gas though, which I'm pretty sure it's its new ability. But either way, we're gonna run away and I guess see what else is lurking in this route. All right, I'm done with this place. There's way too many owls around. I'm getting a little bit nervous right now. I don't do so hot around big feathered creatures. Uh, there's a Sudowoodo over there too, actually. And the amulet coin, which is a staple hold item in Pokemon. Uh, of course, you will get more monies from battles. I wonder if there's so many uh, Noctowls around right now because it's nighttime. I think those tend to come out at night. Sudowoodo is so still though, dude. You're not fooling anyone. I can clearly see the face on you and that goofy little smile. So hopefully we can take it out with uh, Artorius here for some experience or catch it actually. I mean, I think catching Pokemon gives the same experience as taking it down. Those piercing Esper eyes appearing on screen there, uh, but I'm pretty sure it should be low enough to catch now. So maybe I'll go for a Great Ball. Since Sudowoodo, I think is a little bit tougher to catch than regular old Pokemon. Yep, breaks out on the first try. Are you serious, dude? Really? After all that work, I knew I should have just taken it out for the experience, man. Wait, Flash gets strong jaw? What the heck? Did not know that. Um, but maybe we can get in a nuzzle and not take it out. Paralyze it, you know, to make it easier to catch. I'm pretty sure this nuzzle is going to take it down, though. Yeah, that sucks. Artorius isn't even going to get the experience now because he fainted. Ugh. Well, at least Salsa gets a level up, though, and is going to be learning Coil, which apparently raises its attack and defense as well as accuracy. Okay, that's not bad, actually. Definitely better than Rap, I would say. So let's go ahead and teach him that. And yeah, in the end, don't even get to catch him, I guess. Uh, almost missed that hidden item there, which is a PP up. Nice. And I believe there's one more trainer here to take out before we head to Moto Stoke. Young trainer, won't you honor me with a battle? Sure. I don't know what you mean by that. I feel like I've heard that before, but not in that context. Anyway, she's going to have a little yamper there. Big fan of the queen, I suppose. And also a Subat, which is a bit of a rare Pokemon. Or I guess I'm just not used to seeing evolutions. Oh, jeez. Why did I keep in Salsa? 
It's not like this bite is going to take it out in one hit, so definitely not worth it there, uh, especially because this thing is faster than us right now. So maybe we got to bing out Flash, the fastest of Pokemon. I thought it was going to keep Ball Fetch, but Ball Fetch is pretty useless in battle, so I'm glad that uh, Bolton here almost forgot its, you know, evolution name. Um, gets an actual useful ability for battles. Please, Lucky Duckies. No! The Lucky Duckies have failed us for the first time. Though we haven't been confused all that much in this playthrough. But we snap out on the next turn. Okay, Lucky Duckies, I see you. And we're going to hit that bite to take down her Swoobat. And I hope that was her last Pokemon. I'm pretty sure it is, but maybe not as we're learning Charm here. Do we want that over Roar though? I think Roar can actually be pretty handy, so I think I'm gonna keep that around for a little while longer. And that's it for Caroline. Oh, uh -huh. seems you're already quite used to Pokemon battles. Does that mean we honored you or what? I'm still confused about what that meant. Um, nothing else over there though. And it looks like we've got Moto Stoke up ahead, so let's get there. Uh oh. Never mind, um, I've been smuggling illegal puffins for years, and it looks like they finally caught up to me, so let's at least heal up before we take on the cops. Alright, Mr. Night Guard, what you got for us? Hello, hello, what's all this then? Fancy a scrap with a copper? A copper? Hmm, is that really what they call the cops out in the UK? <laughs> I've heard a lot of nicknames for cops. Uh, the 12, 5 -0. Okay, actually I can't think of them right now, but... I know there's a lot of nicknames, depending on what area you're in, uh, but he's going to have a Growlithe. I was actually expecting a Dark-type Pokemon from him, because he looks like the Night Patrol, but I think Growlithe is actually like the signature Pokemon of Cop Trainer classes, usually. Um, it makes sense too, you know, the K9 unit got the Puppy Pokemon out here, but we're not doing nearly enough damage to it right now, so maybe I should have just switched to another Pokemon. Because we are out of PP for Rock Smash now. So we're going to bring out the Flash and finish it off with a spark there. Puppy on puppy action. Whatever that means. Boltund is better. And Officer Raymond is down. You've got some Pokemon with you there. Your battle technique is bang on too. What do you mean I've got Pokemon with me? Is that not why we battled? Did you not know that beforehand? Uh, okay, Mr. Copper. Anyway, I guess we should hop on our bike here. Of course, as soon as I do, there's a whole bunch of sparkly items on the ground, which are actually just feathers. I don't really know if I'm going to keep picking these up. Watch the next one we see not even be a feather. Okay, actually, there's only one left anyway, so you already know, guys. I need to pick up every item, no matter how useless or useful it is. I'm a collector and can't let a single one slip past me. But anyway, we have made it back to Moto Stoke. My Corviknight got all rested up, so it's already headed off to its next Poke job. Ah, yes, the Poke jobs. Should definitely check those out in the next episode because that is going to do it for today. In the next one, we will take on the Moto Stoke Stadium, Kabu, the Fire-type master. Hope you all have a nice day, and I will see you in the next one.